We just learned about labor demand, or how many workers a firm hires and how much it pays them. The key formula we found was that W equals P times MPL, or wage equals price times the marginal product of labor. The intuition is this. Let's say you have a lemonade business and sell lemonade at a dollar a cup. And let's say your buddy asks to work for you and say he wants $10 an hour. If he's lazy and only makes five cups per hour, should you hire him? No, definitely not. You have to pay him $10 and only makes $5 worth of stuff. But if he works hard and can make 15 cups an hour, then he's worth hiring because the wage is lower than what he makes you. That's a basic example. Is that how things work in the real world? Definitely. And one way to see this is with professional basketball. A lot of you might know about the NBA, which is the leading professional men's league in the US. Now, if you're running an NBA team, how do you decide whether to sign a player? That is, how do you think about your labor demand? Basketball players are employees after all, but instead of making a good like lemonade, you could think of making wins for your team. If they make more wins, your organization does great and makes more revenue. If they don't produce more, then that's bad for your organization. So if you run a basketball team, you'll still use the same framework we described above, W equals P times MPL, but where MPL is something like the player's contribution to the team's success. That's why a player like LeBron James makes so much. His salary is just under $31 million per year. His wage is so high because his marginal product of labor is too. If you replace any player in your team with a guy like LeBron, your wins go through the roof. You may win a championship and your revenue goes up too. So whereas the average NBA player makes $4.9 million per year, LeBron makes six times that. That's W equals price times MPL in action. Basketball is a popular sport around the world and smaller countries have professional teams too. There are many top US players who aren't quite good enough for the NBA, so they go to a country like Israel. Players who aren't good enough to make the NBA can dominate in a league like Israel's. So what do you think salaries look like in the Israeli league? Consider a player like Nate Robinson, who played in the NBA and in Israel during his career. He's an interesting player. He's only five foot nine inches, which is too short for most players to find success in the NBA. But he had some good years and even won the NBA dunk contest three times. By the end of his NBA career, Nate Robinson wasn't very effective. He averaged only five points per game. He came off the bench with the backup players. He didn't even play in half his team's games. He made about $2 million per year. Why? Because his marginal product of labor was low. But then he quit the NBA and signed with the Maccabi Tel Aviv, the top team in Israel. What happened when he shifted to the Israeli league? Suddenly he was one of the best players in the league. He averaged 16 points per game. His marginal product of labor went through the roof. He was able to produce many more wins. So did his salary go up? If W equals P times MPL and MPL goes up, shouldn't wage go up? It didn't. He only made 300,000 per year in Israel, a steep pay cut from the NBA, where he didn't even play all the time. What happened? The price of the product dropped. In the NBA, if you win a championship, you get massive TV revenues, huge profits from merchandise, and you sell tens of thousands of tickets per night. The value of being the best team in the NBA may be worth billions. For example, tickets to see LeBron James' team play against the Warriors, another great team, go for $175 at the very cheapest. And if you want the very best seats to see LeBron, it'll set you back thousands of dollars. In Israel, the value of being the best team is positive, but it's way lower. To see Nate Robinson's team play, even the very premium seats cost only $75. So when Nate Robinson helps the Israeli team produce more wins, his marginal product of labor goes up compared to his marginal product of labor in the US. But at the same time, the price of the good is much, much lower than it was in the US. Since wage equals price times marginal product of labor, the higher marginal product of labor is not enough to compensate for the lower price. As a result, his wage is lower. The story of Nate Robinson gives us a good example of how labor demand works. A worker's wage depends on his productivity, but also the value of the product he's producing.